Now we'll get into a little Q&A. Hopefully the noise isn't too loud. We've got uh, construction going on in the background, unfortunately. But uh, now let's jump into a little q and I'll answer all your burning questions to the best of my abilities. Let's go from there. All right. Let me get out of here. Let's see. Nikolai, I'm hoping for 100, 100 basis points. I said a few greens ready to deploy some of them tomorrow. I got to tell you, I'm with you, Nikolai. I was hoping they would have done that in the beginning. Just scare the living tar out of the out of the markets, make everybody shard their pants, and then just say, look, the Fed goes, that's 100 basis points. You want to keep, you want us to keep doing that? We'll turn this car around right now. Stop with, uh, with the uh, heavy demand. And I, I, I think that would have worked a lot better than just going 50, 75, or 75, 75, 75. Just rip the bandit off and just start off strong. But uh, we'll see. We'll see if they have the resolve to keep going. Uh, <laughs> now he says, be careful what you wish for with your red votes. I vote candidates, not parties. Of course, of course not. We don't want to do those things. So I got to tell you, I've, uh, I've voted for much worse. And we'll so. I would, uh, to me, on all honesty, I think we can all agree that politicians are liars, right? I mean, they're, they're paid to lie, essentially. So, I mean, hopefully they can uh, move forward with crypto digital assets and uh, the positivity as far as the, the, the bills that are coming about. I don't, I don't see why they wouldn't if they want to keep a competitive advantage in their district, because again, crypto digital assets, especially here in Texas, well, I'm, I'm in Puerto Rico now, but in Texas, uh, crypto is great for job creation. Have you seen all the all the job creation and uh, construction that's being done for the different Bitcoin mining operations? That helps those senators and and House members who want to get elected because that's just good for their constituents. So let's hope so. Let's see. ETH went up 20%. In what time frame? That's always the question. Let's take a look. Actually, let me go here. Mm, ba -ba -ba -ba. ETH went up 20%, not today, but in seven days, it's gone up 17%. So yeah, now it's a little bit, uh, I think it uh, topped out around 1620, somewhere around there. So not too bad. We'll take it. Uh, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> I read somewhere we should vote no on the plan for FTX. So I read the exact opposite. I just got a letter from Voyager, and it pretty much said that uh, the UCC, which never really disclosed the different plans for Voyager, all of them, they just pretty much put forth and said, okay, FTX is, is, is the best one that they have. Uh, but what's interesting to me is, first of all, the UC is, is made up of people who are people just like you and me who have lost money on Voyager. And one of the things they did go against is they were not going to allow the CEO, uh, Steve Ehrlich, and the COO to get off scot-free. Uh, they took a look at uh, their uh, revenue or their different assets that they had. And apparently Steve only had like $2.1 million worth uh, as far as net worth, which I find extremely hard to believe, extremely hard to believe. And they're saying that they're going to go forward. They want people to vote yes for the FTX. I'll take a look. There is a time frame that said in November 29th. So we got time for me to take a look at it and see what actually it is. The problem is, is that they said, uh, if we go forward, uh, that will admonish or let off the hook uh, Steve Ehrlich and CEO and the CEO, I forgot his name. And the UCC said, no, we're not going to allow that. What we're going to do is we're going to move forward. And if the revenue reports come back and it's actually verifiable, even with us looking at it, not just the courts, but the UCC saying, okay, uh, Steve and the CEO only have a certain amount. So it wouldn't really behoove us to even sue them anyhow, because they don't have any money. So what's the point? Uh, if that's the truth, then we'll go forward and uh, we'll still and they said this, we'll still still want back 1.2 million. So Steve has like 2.1 million, they want 1.2 million from him. And the CEO, I forgot how much there. I'll cover another video. But they said if, if it comes to light that these are inaccurate or data has been falsified, then we will take uh, these two gentlemen to court in, uh, in a lawsuit. So we'll see how it all works out.
interesting times. Shannon, hello. Bike says, is there, are there risks to a spot ETF aside from the usual crypto volatility? Uh, you know, if it's a spot ETF that's uh, not paper spot, but actual with the physical uh, Bitcoin, I see it would be a pretty nice big boom. However, remember in 2017, we had the, the futures contract with the CME, and that's just all paper trading as, as far as Bitcoin. That's really what helped to... Uh, Help to crash the market in that regard futures i never saw that as like like a big uh, positive for crypto and the digital asset market i really didn't even care and you could just tell it was gonna you know it's just being manipulated which it was and here we are so as far as spot etf crypto volatility i think it could be <laughs> initially pretty good but again how much uh how much manipulation is out there and i know people are gonna say would well, metals are manipulated and the stock market is manipulated. Yes, I got it. I know. It's all manipulated. So, yeah. And let's see here. Let me bring something up. Da, 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 da. So, Bitcoin today. 20,000. Not bad. What else? Oops. Oh, that's what I want to see. Dogecoin. 10% up for, wow, in, seven day, in 24 hours. 127% for the week i just want to remind everybody dogecoin everybody remember the dogecoin millionaire seemed like a nice guy just never sold and uh he was on twitter talking about hey because he put in one hundred eighty thousand initially and then he went up to over two million and then went down to one hundred eighty thousand again and he was just waiting he goes hey i'm half a millionaire now and he goes here's some of the things i learned and what he's talked about in his in his, in his tweets or his uh the module that he put out, the information he put out, he said, look, he goes, I'm going to start selling. He goes, I'm not going to ride this all the way up again and then go back down. He goes, you have to take profits. And I was like, wow, there you go. So I, hopefully I can get, I'd love to get him on the show and just to see where, how he's going to do that, what his, his, his points are, where he wants to go along the way. But I thought it was interesting that the biggest diamond hands person out there is like, you know what, you know, you have to take profits along the way. Makes sense. Uh, <laughs> Rob isn't saying that there isn't other things besides crypto going on. He's just saying Republicans get more done. Everybody's different. I've known some, I haven't personally known, but let's be honest. There's some, been some bad Republicans and bad Democrats. And not even has got a right. You know, you, you, you vote for the candidate. When do you think Seoul will leave beta? I don't know. Let's, I just hope it just stays up. Remember, I own Solana. I own Cardano. I own polka dots and avalanche and near protocol and Bitcoin. I own a whole bunch of stuff, right? I kind of spread things around. I don't know which one's going to make it. And I really don't care, honestly. Just one of them. That'd be great. Uh, <laughs> James says, remember to do your own research. Please be picky. It is, and we can only do so much research because let's be honest. Uh, how much information did we never get told about celsius and voyager and luna and i mean and pick your DeFi protocol i just read a report that uh 97 of uh projects that were built on uniswap were rug pulls 97 percent. so i think to myself i'm like you know it all comes down to a risk reward ratio you can really get risky and hopefully make a bunch of bunch of money but uh, in the long run it's just uh just gambling and i'm okay with that I got a separate separate channel called Dan Degen. That's where I do all my gambling. But if you watch those videos, just expect to lose everything. But uh, maybe they'll do well. Who knows? Yeah, I saw this. Johnny says, Rob, what are your thoughts about the co-founder of MakerDAO? Found dead in Puerto Rico today. First of all, I wasn't around. So don't blame me. But uh, I heard there was a strange tweet. Let me pull this up. This is uh, next level stuff. Very odd. I got a message. Uh, let's see. There it is from Dylan. So this was Nikolai Muchin found dead in San Juan, Puerto Rico, which is where I'm at right now. 
Uh, and this was his tweet just uh, three days ago. He says, CIA and Mossad and pedo elite are running some kind of sex trafficking entrapment blackmail ring out of Puerto Rico and Caribbean islands. They're going to frame me with a laptop planted by my ex-girlfriend who was a spy. They will torture me to death. Look, I don't know if that's legit, but that sounds out there. That's all I'll say, but uh, I feel sorry for that gentleman's family. Mm. Wow, I know, that was crazy, right? Akash says, what assets are the Bitcoin that you're decent right now? Not financial advice, but here's what I buy every day. Let me pull it up on my phone. I honestly sometimes just... Uh... All right, here we go. So uh, Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin, and then some of these, I'm not going to tell you which ones, but some are every week and some are every day. We'll see it all. Aha. Uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Polygon, Solana, Algorand, uh, Chainlink, Near Protocol, Cosmos, Cardano. I think that's it for this one. So, uh, but you have to understand, I DCA sparingly, not as much as I used to, because uh, I don't know if it's going to drop. But I know one thing. That's I'm not, I'm not the genius to figure out when the absolute bottom. I talked about this multiple times. If I'm wrong and uh, we don't drop anymore, well, at least I got something. And I've been DCing every day. And I got to tell you, somebody asked me, like, is it really worth it? Look at this. Let me show you. The website DCA-CC, like 25 bucks in a week. Let's use my favorite example. Of uh, Cardano. You just put 25 bucks in a week from 2018 to now? First of all, if you sold it a reasonable amount of time, you would have invested 4,800 bucks and you would have had 168,000. You'll never time the top. Sorry to tell you that. But it, I mean, if you screw up and you, and you, you know, you don't hit that top, you sell it later, you would have invested 4,800 bucks. You would have had $130,000. So, and that's just 25 bucks a week. That's what I did. Cause I was just like, it'll go up some point. And here we are. But again, it's all about valuation. Those, those projects, they're not all going to be good. Some suck. That's just how it is. All right. I can't. I can't read. It's okay, man. Nobody's, you got to stick to your strengths. If you can't read, it's all right, golfer. Uh, okay. So Scott N says, Rob, were you able to watch the full episode of Bankless with SBF? It seems like he wasn't budging on the idea of leaving DeFi alone. We think of the view on DeFi. So when you're in a debate, sometimes like, you know this, like when you're arguing with your wife or your significant other, and you know you're wrong, you just don't want to admit it because you're just so damn stubborn. Trust me, I'm that guy. And I think Sam might be a little bit there because I watched most of it and he did concede some points. But if you look over at his, at his, uh, his Twitter account, he pretty, much just, he pretty much said, you know what? Those were some wrong ideas. I, I was wrong on that one and we shouldn't do KYC and AML for DeFi projects because it doesn't make any sense. And we talked about this yesterday, well, a couple of days ago with uh, uh, Vitalik Buter and his assessment. He's like, you can KYC and AML all you want for DeFi for retail investors. But the hackers don't do that, so what's the point? And it's true. So, eh, we'll see. I again, it's it's just because Sam thinks a certain way doesn't mean it's actually going to uh, go that way. It's going to take a lot of voices, and it's not just Sam talking to to uh, congressmen and women and and uh, senators and Democrats, Republicans. I mean, you've got also Charles going up to the hill talking about. It. You've all you've also got the uh, Blockchain Alliance going to talk for us. So. I think they want the best things. We'll see. I think so. Mountain Man, hello. Tesla. Tesla. Hello, Tesla. <laughs> hello, friends. Greetings from the IA's dream. Mad Cow is here. Uh, yeah. Pickle says, sadly, in the sailboat, too. Lesson learned. Tries it for life. Exactly. There's a reason why I got those rules. Those rules right here. The last, well... The middle one, nothing on exchanges. Don't leave any exchanges. It's the recipe for disaster, right? Take it all off. 
Yeah, Neil's got a point. SBF went from a hero to an enemy. Some people just, like, I don't know if people just listen to what he said or they just say, well, this guy said he's a jerk and, and he's not good for crypto, so I say he's not good for crypto. And I'm like, well, yeah. Um, I mean, if you don't like the fact that he's uh, positive for regulation, I mean, look, I'm positive for a crypto regulation, but I'm more for the clarity aspect. Like, I don't think that you should KYC and AML DeFi either. That's stupid. I mean, why? Why? what's the point? But I do think we should get a little bit of clarity. What's a currency? What's a commodity? What's a security? And then just go from there. And then everybody can be happy and they can, all the agencies can have their, their toys back and then they can say, well, we're doing something. Sure, whatever. That's it. And again, I don't, I mean, if, if something gets called a security, you, just, you, you register and it's a big pain in the A, but still, I buy securities every week. They're called stocks. All right. Vicky, I've looked enough Kopi. Looks pretty good. Uh, so that's a good question. Rod, do you think if you factor in much higher inflation in this bear market that we'd be closer to the 85% drawdown? And there's also some corresponding data which takes a look at the traditional market, S&P 500, NASDAQ. If you, if you account for inflation, we're actually at all-time lows uh, in, and actually almost beating uh, 2008. So the same thing could be said for crypto. It could be. But remember, uh, I mean, we, we've had quite an inflationary run. I don't want to say that it is the 85% potentially, but uh, only time will tell. And um, who knows if it could actually be the actual bottom. I, I think it's all about, is that a factor? Or do we just say, well, even though there's inflation, there's still all that money sloshing around. The government hasn't gotten that back yet. So I still see it go down. Yes, Vicky, Dan Dijan, second channel. Thank you. Do I have an alibi? Yeah, I was watching Netflix. You can check my account. Thoughts on BNB? It's super centralized, BNB token. It is, but it seems like nobody really cares because I think it's the top in the top five. Isn't that amazing? I mean, everybody rallies about, well, it's got to be decentralized. It's got to be, it's, you know, we, we got to have so many nodes and so many things, and, and uh, it's really got to be uh, that aspect of crypto. Yet, what is BNB? It's fourth. So... I think as people like complain about it, they're like, I don't want, and this shouldn't be, decent, this should be decentralized. Well, not everybody agrees with you. That's it. Yes, ma'am, I agree with you. Uh, he did seem unhinged. That's scary stuff. So, Nikolai, you ever thought of becoming a dot validator? Um... I'd have my team look at that. Uh, we do uh, the general, the the team that runs the Cardano stake pool and also run the Avalanche stake pool. Uh, we could look at DOT, but as I understand, it's a little bit of a it's a real big hassle to, to be a validator. So not really. That's true. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Cat with the cases. So not many people work anymore. Just jump chats. Here's what I know. Most of the people that are in the chat, most, they are at work right now. But they just still tune in. So what are you going to do? Thoughts on Pelosi Pantygate? No. No. Because, man, I don't want to get involved in that nonsense. Feel sorry for her husband, though. That guy got whacked with a hammer. Yeah, Chris says a year ago today was the height of the bull market. Yeah, November. It's true. It seemed like it was a lot longer ago. But you know what's great about that is that we're that much closer to the next bull run. That's what I kept thinking about today. And I also, I thought about this. I'm like, shoot, it's been a year since the last uh, top. So if you think about it, this is 2018, and I only have I don't have that many I don't have that much time to accumulate more crypto that I'm doing, and I'm not buying dips. I'm just dollar cost averaging. Clarity is long overdue. You have a comment on Voyager. James, we just talked about this. Uh, I'll take a look at it, but 
I mean, let's be honest, 72% back is better than 0%. I know people will complain. They say, well, we didn't get to see all the, the different offers and we didn't. I'm only worrying about things that I can change. It's time to stop gambling and just say, you know what? If that's what it's going to be, that's what it's going to be. We can deny this. You know, we can all vote against it. But are you ready to say, no, I don't want this? And then just say, well, 72% of my of the valuation is gone for potentially a better deal in the future? It's up to you. I probably will be voting for that to go forward. That's just the truth. <laughs> the guy only there for Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Norman says, we don't have to go down exactly. No, we do not. Could be less. And that's why I say, like, I, I could be wrong. Like, I, I always talk about, I think we're going to go lower, but that's why I still buy a little bit here. Rob, based on your experience, what's your conviction of crypto ever bouncing back and reaching all time as ice? This is a very simple, simple answer. There's a reason why I stick around and do these videos. It's because the crypto and digital asset space, it's going to do a lot of good. It's going to change a lot of things. And there's going to be real world utility uh, brought about by it. And a lot of people will say, well, this is, this is it. This is the last part of crypto. And uh, that was before and it'll go to zero or it'll just, you know, limp along. I heard the same thing in 2018. I heard the same thing in 2019. And 2020 got a little bit uh, duller. Then in 2021, uh, when I was telling people to take profits, I heard a lot of, you're a boomer, which I'm not. Uh, and you have PTSD from 2017, 2018, 2019. And you should get out of the way because this market's going to go up forever uh, because of all the institutions are here. MicroStrategy is never going to sell. And all these institutions, Tesla's never going to sell. And I was like, they'll sell. And it's just, it's just a nat, the, the, same, the same cycle that I see before is the emotionality of people going, it'll never come back. It's the same thing in 2018, and we're seeing the same thing in 2022. And then once we get to 2024 and 2025, when we go back to a bull market, I'm going to hear the same things. Rob, you don't know what you're talking about. You are a boomer. I'm not. And these institutions and these governments and these sovereign funds, which who knows we'll probably get into at that point, uh, they're here to stay and they're never going to sell and you should hold forever in diamond hands and blah, 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 blah. And it'll be the same thing going over and over again. So, yeah. Uh, so that's what I say. And I will tell you this, there's something that does concern me and I was going to do a separate video, but it's, it's talk like this, like, uh, uh Stanley Druckenmiller saying that we're going to be flat for a decade. And you had a Gareth Soloway saying we're going to be flat for a decade. Then you had another hedge fund manager. What's this guy's name? Uh, Saba Capital, Boaz Weinstein. We're going to be flat for a decade. And what they're talking about, potentially, is, you know, the S&P 500 back in the 60s, 69? It didn't hit its all-time high again until 1992. So let me do some quick math like 25 years well 2003 i guess it took 25 years to get back to its all-time high there's a lot of problems in, in that area so do i think we could, this could happen again maybe but i would like to point out one important thing that is if we would have bought the all-time high and we keep dollar cost averaging down here just in the s p 500 days in 1971 well, we bought them here and we take profits along the way coming up. And then, of course, once it starts to go down, maybe take a little profits and then start buying down here, selling here, buying a little bit here, selling, selling. It's just the same thing. Like, even though this was one of like, like the forgotten decade when stocks were just flat, moving sideways, going down 25 years, again, very different time, there was still a couple of bull runs in there. Nice bull run here. Nice bull run here, nice bull run here, a little bit down, and a big bull run here. So, again, I, I don't think it's that, that big of a thing. 
I, I do still think that we have more all-time highs. Could be wrong, but I think that's where we're going. Yeah, man, I hope we get power back soon. So, yeah, but it allows us to go to our properties and, um, and you know, say, hey, we need to fix this, we need to fix that. Like, you can see this wall is looking pretty rough. Where's right here? This wall is looking pretty rough over here. We had a long-term renter in here and just didn't do so good. That's a good question. Rob, where and when the uh, Puerto Rico crypto meetup? I got to do that maybe next week. We'll go to the smokehouse, my favorite place. Ty Boy says, will you be buying more sweat? No, because I bought a boatload before. So I'm just sitting on it. And I can't wait to dump on everybody. No, I'm just kidding. So I got uh, sweat coin, and I have a lockup period of 12 months when it starts to get unlocked up to 24 months. So I'm here for the long haul. But I'm not going to buy anymore because I bought a lot. So just so you guys know, I'm super biased, obviously, right? Yeah, Zachary says, why buy swimming to do it free? Exactly my point. Why even buy it? I think it's going to do pretty well, and I can only walk so many <clears throat> miles. But, uh, yeah, if you don't want to buy it, just download the app. Link's in the description. And they, they give you free sweat coin. So just do that. You don't even have to buy anything. It's free. Not walking device. But walking is a great exercise. I don't know. Jupiter, I don't know what that is. When Toga, oh, Toga thumbnail. Like for when James did his, his, uh, uh, his Marcus, Marcus Aurelius uh, thumbnail for, for, for Halloween. That was pretty funny. I got in two questions. I feel special. What do you think of Cody? Cody looks good. Currency of the internet, C-O-T-I. I just got a, I haven't bought any though yet, but I will. I, I got to take a look. I can't say I will. Surfing, no surfing yet. Hmm. Uh, are you a certain amount of products only guy, like only five or ten, or do you take positions in any products that you find interesting? Oh, that's a good question. Are you a certain amount of products guy? No, because um, in the bull run of 2017, I had over, I want to say 40 different projects. It's just too hard to keep track. But for me, like I know like like James most and Ben somewhat will, and a bunch of other people will say, I'm, I can only manage X amount of projects. And if I get into something else, I got to you know rotate it around. I really don't care. For me, I'm like, if it looks good and I'm going to make some money, I'll stick around for it and see what it is. The hard part is tracking. And yes, it does get a little bit difficult. And yes, I have let some things lag, but uh, I do okay. <laughs> when I'm not your dad t-shirt, that's a good one. I'm not your dad. I should get, that would be great stuff. Yeah, so I hear... That's right, Oski. Rob is diamond hands, hodl, green screen, boomer. It's true. JH, that's me telling you with almost 10 years experience. Uh, ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, the plot thickens. Uh, the home, and you're talking about uh, this, the creator of MakerDAO who just passed away. The home has six cameras visible from the street, and the security programming was done by the same people who were the president. Something's off. I don't know. That could be. Could be. I'm not sure. Mm, yeah, that was nice. Any link brains here? ETH is too expensive in transaction. That's why they use Polygon. Polygon's great. I think that's one of the, the DCAs that I do every day. Pretty sure. Polygon. I think that's it. True. That's a good point. Elon goes web through with Twitter. He looked like a genius yet again. And that 44 billion pay will be nothing. You know, I always thought about this. And we had talked about this before about what if you could use Dogecoin, which is an example. 
And if you wanted to tweet something out, you had to use a fraction of a Dogecoin, right? Not too much. And uh, it would allow it to be, you know, sent in a certain way. I know people are like, well, that doesn't sound too good. Why does that sound good? Well, it would stop the bots, right? Because for all the bots, it's just free. So they just spin up a bot or a thousand bots or 10,000 bots and off you go. But if you had to pay for each tweet, would you do it? Or how about this? Or would you pay a certain amount to uh, be an exclusive tier or something like that for Twitter? Me personally, I can't stand using Twitter anymore. Like every time I, I do a tweet, I get like a hundred bots saying something or else. So it's like a big pain in the A. But if you use Dogecoin, perhaps, and I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but to send out a tweet, to receive tweets, to boost something, I would do that. And wouldn't that be a great use case for Dogecoin on top of the fact of Web3 and crypto? And maybe they could use it in, in, in multiple ways. Maybe they say, well, instead of just Dogecoin, we're going to use Doge. Near protocol and uh, Polygon. Why not? Why not? <laughs> pay for tweets? Nope. Facebook is going to be charging. Yeah. Pay for tweets? Nope. Boost me. I would go that route. I would. All right, buddy. So they only, <laughs> they only make 3 billion doges every year. It's true. Very tough. Kind of inflationary. All right, buddy. So that's it for today. So hopefully uh, the noise wasn't too bad. Thanks for sticking around. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, thumbs up and subscribe, all that good stuff. But that's it for today. Uh, tomorrow, let's see if I can put out a video as long as the power is still on and we'll go from there. So thanks, everybody, for stopping by. I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one. Adios.